And uh, Father God, only you, Lord God, it is only you. It's all about you, and it's not about us. We actually got to see what it means to disappear and that the only one is to be seen is you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for blessing this word here. Let it go in and energize and activate and motivate and inspire action. Lord God, action. Holy Spirit, we just thank you. Come get us, Holy Spirit. Come get us, Holy Spirit. Breath of God, wind of God, blow over us and in us and out of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. It was tremendous. And uh, just to see people going forth from this place and making a difference in, in the lives of people who so many have nothing, really, but they have so much. You know, they really do. The less they have, the more they have, the more hunger. We've never seen hunger like this. We said, God, how did this happen? I mean, it was everywhere we went. People were just being ministered to and, like Eric said, falling out under the power of God. And we're going, how is it? And the Lord said, hunger. He meets hunger. And there was so much hunger in this place. And so I asked God, Lord God, make us hungry. Make us so hungry in this house and in our lives. So I said, Lord, what do you want me to share? And uh, so this is what he said. We need to be stewards with the words that he has given to us. And so I'm going to be reviewing the word for the year except with a teaching uh, a teaching input into it. The Lord gave me so much revelation on the revelation. Does that make sense? <laughs> so I thought, Lord, this is a now word. This is to be implemented. And I don't know, I believe Pastor David will do it also at some point. But this was a now word. And so I'm going to do it. Uh, and, and share the revelation that, that God gave me within it. So this is the word for 2017, and it's launching into expansion. God is wanting to expand our hearts, expand our vision, expand what we say, expand our walk in this year. It isn't just about expanding a building, which is going to happen. And we want to see, by the way, more dream cards in here. More dream cards of what you want to see in your tabernacle, what you want to see in that. It's about expanding in here. When this expands, when this expands, everything else expands, okay? When our walk with Jesus expands. And so once again, 2017, 17 signifies perfection and spiritual order with our walk with God. Hebrew year of 5777. Five signifies grace and government, favor and abundance. Seven is divine completion. Year of the sword, the clashing of swords. Have we not seen that? We are watching before us in this nation a clashing of swords. We saw clashing of swords in the Philippines. They have put in a new president over there, and there is a clashing of swords in the Philippines. There's things happening uh, so dramatically in both countries and all over the world. There's things happening in Europe. There's a clashing of swords in Europe right now. In France, who's going on the France? You're going to go. Okay, we've got a team going to France here very soon in June, and so we're going to send you out. But there's a clashing of swords in the EU, uh, states, uh, countries that are pulling out of the EU and saying we are a sovereign nation. And so there are things, and the enemy doesn't like it. The enemy doesn't like change. And you know what? I've gotten to like change. 
I didn't like change either, but I love change now because it means you're doing something. It means that you're going forward. Okay, and also we're in our 12th year anniversary, which is 12 means perfect governmental rule or order, divine organization and apostolic fullness. Nothing thrills our hearts as pastors more than to see you being sent out wherever it is. On your job, at your, uh, in your schools, in other nations, we love to see you going forward in the presence of God and bringing the kingdom of God. But I love perfect governmental rule. Oh, my goodness. We are watching order come into this house. Order is coming into this house. God's order. And I'll tell you what, it ruffles feathers when order starts coming in. When you come out of something you were in and you're transitioning into that order of God in alignment with heaven, things can rattle a little bit. Look at the nation. This nation is coming out of generations of stuff. And we are shifting. This boat is shifting and turning. And you can hear the grinding of of the shifting. You can almost hear that grinding. But we are going to set sail in a new direction. In a new direction. And we need to be praying. We need to be praying. All right, here's the word. I hear a voice like that of many waters loudly proclaiming, order in this courtroom, order in this house. The voice of God speaks specifically over this house, this tabernacle of his presence on this mountain. As a body and individually, you've walked through a journey of purifying, purging, shaking, shifting, and the burning away. A season of dying not only to self, but to your plans and purposes. When we went to Philippines, we had a plan. Those plans went up in smoke. And those plans went up in smoke by the moment. By the moment they went up in smoke. We had to be so flexible. We had to be so dead to what we wanted. So dead to be seen. So dead to be noticed. So dead to be recognized. Because I'll tell you what. Many times there, there was no speaking. It was just God coming in. So God can use uh, dead people. He raises us up, right? Raises us from the dead. <laughs> when we're dead to offense, when we're dead, all that. Simultaneously, you not only experience the enemy's challenge against your identity and destiny. Who has felt the challenge against your identity and destiny? Everything that you thought, what in the world? Do I even have a destiny? Do I even have, who, who am I? Who, who am I? And I'll tell you, we found out even more who we were on this trip. When you go and you minister into places like this and you're pressed into service, Alita, you came forward and I saw more of who you were created to be than I ever have. Jen, the same thing. Same thing. When you're in ministry mode, when you're doing what God has called you to do, all of a sudden, those, those false identities fall off. And you've also felt the birth pains of my will being done in you and in this house as it is in heaven. Two things were happening. We were being challenged by the enemy, right, in this last season, and also things being birthed inside of us, the birth pains of God's will being done. The result, no longer your will but mine be done. You allow the penetrative light of my love to expose deep issues within the innermost parts of your heart. Psalms 42, deep calls out to deep that your waves and billows will wash over me. Who knows that scripture? David, the psalmist, King David, uh, he was going through amazing struggles with God. Who can relate? Amazing struggles. And in this psalm, you can actually see him going back and forth from soul to spirit. You know, one minute he's saying, oh, why are you downcast, oh, my soul? You know, what's wrong? Why are you so depressed? What's wrong? And then the next, hope in God. Hope in God. So back and forth. 
I can relate to that. One minute you're just on it and you're going, hoping God, yes. And then you go, oh, what's happening? What's going on? What's happening? So deep is crying. Deep is crying out to deep. And when you read that in the Hebrew, it means deep crying out to deep. It's God accosting you. Boy, that's a heavy word. That's directly. He loves us enough. He is a good papa. He's a good, good father. And he goes right into those areas. And, and, and he knows right what to do to say, um, knock, knock. Who's there? Who's there? It's Cookie. The real Cookie is there. And she's hidden, like all of us, under pain or under trauma, whatever. And the Lord is speaking to those places to bring us forth into our true identity. Okay? As a result of all that, treasure previously unknown to you has risen up out of hiddenness and into the radiance of of my presence. A new and exciting life is birthing and bursting out onto the world scene. Oh, yes, God. You are raising up an army of worshipers. You are raising up an army from this house, equipped and empowered to go possess new territory for my kingdom. This is your breakout and breakthrough year. Yeah. Hallelujah. I watched, we watched, the whole team watched, team members using that which the enemy came to take them out. We got to see it turn into a weapon of war and used to take out the enemy and other people's lives. Testimonies from all of them used to flee, to fly open, fling open uh, prison doors and watch prisoners come out of captivity. It was just awesome. In your life, that which the enemy has used to take you out, there, that test, and I think, uh, I think, Ed, you said this, without the test, there's no money. <laughs> right? Without a test, there's no money. So, in that, there is a weapon and a treasure. He gives us treasures in darkness in Isaiah. Wow, you should unpack that scripture. I don't have time to unpack it, but it's powerful. And it goes along these lines of what is in that. As you shared so beautifully yesterday at the women's group, uh, Alita, you know, the purpose in pain. What's the purpose in what, what we're going through? There's a greater purpose. There's a greater purpose. Heaven's order is released into this place that I call home. Into my precious ones, I have meticulously tended as the shepherd. I am the one true living God, and I am a God of order. I spoke into the nothingness of this earth, and all things created came into righteous divine order. I decree over this house order. I decree into the physical realm Divine heavenly order or order in our bodies, into your minds, into your finances, into your relationships. And Lord God, we decree as your people, we declare and decree order in this nation. Mark 6, 39, and this is where I'm going to commentate on the word. Mark 6, 39. Let's turn there. Mark 6, 39. Oh, thank you, God. Order. Order is so important in this hour. And the enemy is trying to divide and conquer. He's trying to divide and conquer in uh, the body of Christ. He's trying to divide. That's right, Joseph. That's right. We're going to come out of this thing more powerful, more together. All right, verse 39, then he commanded them. Now, this is Jesus, all right, and, and he's got all of his disciples. He's got all these people, the multitude of people that followed him, and it's that mass feeding that he did, all right? But it's a, this, this is so fun. Then he commanded them to make them all sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in what? 
in hundreds and fifties. Now, why did he do that? There was a purpose. There's a purpose to everything that God does. It was order. Order precedes miracles. So he commanded them. I mean, he's the son of God. He could have had them all over the place. And they would have all been fed. But he was saying something in this, in this scripture. So they sat down in ranks in hundreds and fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples and set before them. And the two fish he divided among them all. So they all ate and were filled and they took up how many? Divine governmental order. Twelve. I mean, they could have taken up 13 or they could have taken up 11. See, you know what? The, lot, the word of God is alive. There are awesome revelations and nuggets in here. And you go, oh, that was, I take everything. I tell you, I look for goodies everywhere in the word of God. There's goodies. So he took up 12 baskets full of fragments and the fish. Now those who had eaten the loaves were about 5,000 men. All right, verse 45, immediately, say immediately, after this amazing miracle, can you imagine seeing this, being there and watching it over and over, oh my gosh, we keep picking up, how did this happen, you know, your brain, just sort of like us on the trip, how did this happen, we got just a taste of that, how did this happen, all right, immediately, he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. All right? To Basahada, okay? Where he sent the multitude away. And that, that name, all right, Basahada, is house of fruit and house of food. All right, so he just multiplied food and he made them get on the boat to the place that's the house of fruit and food. The other definition of that, or snare. Or snare. He was saying something. They knew it because they knew what that name meant. They didn't have to look it up. They spoke the language. They knew what that translated out to. See, you, you have to understand that the disciples did not understand, and, and I'll read that, the breaking, the multiplication of the bread because their hearts were hardened. It was a snare. They, they, it, it turned into a snare. They began to question it and what's going on. Instead of receiving it, okay, they were out of order. And the Lord God was telling them to go into the same of the multiplication of food. And fruit, house of food and fruit, or snare. And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. He didn't go with them. What do you think he was praying on that mountain? What do we pray sometimes? <laughs> he was praying for his beloved ones. Have their hardened heart melt. Let Lord God, this little boat ride, do something to that hard heart. It's out of order. It's not lined up. It's not in alignment. Now, when evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. Then, in, in the presence of God, he saw them straining at rowing. Straining means put to the test. They were being tested in the middle of a storm. They just saw miracles. They just saw this amazing thing. And he immediately threw them in a boat and said, go. And he prayed for them. He loves us so much. He's deep calling to deep. That's what he was doing. Deep calling to deep. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Get it. Get delivered of that fear. Get delivered of that questioning, that doubt, unbelief. For the wind was against them. Wind there means violent agitation. How many have felt agitated? <laughs> this struggle. 
You've seen these blessings, you've seen miracles, but then all of a sudden, circumstances, reports from the doctor, different things, oh, it pulls against this, and there's this violent agitation that happens. Now, about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea and would have passed them by. And when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were troubled. But immediately he talked with them and said to them, be of good cheer. Be happy. Hey, what's your problem? It's I. Do not be afraid. What's your problem? Then he went up into the boat to them and the wind ceased. That agitation ceased. Where do we go? To be set free from doubt, unbelief, agitation, and fear. Jesus. We run. We embrace. We love on Jesus. He's the answer. Be of good cheer. That's what he's saying to you. And it ceased. And they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and marveled. So, now they're greatly amazed and marveled. To me, the multiplication of the bread and seeing all that, I would have been amazed and marveled. But all of a sudden, they embraced the one who is the miracle worker, put their eyes on him, and not on the miracle, but on him, embraced him, right? For they had not understood about the loaves because their heart was hardened. All right? All right, back to the word. Align yourself with the truth of my word. Align yourself with who I declare you to be in this world and in my kingdom. Align yourself with light and life, not with darkness and death. Align yourself with the truth of God's word, not what you're hearing right now in this nation. Align with the truth of what God says. I has, it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. You have just crossed over a supernatural threshold. Wow, we have. We've seen it. We've experienced it in abundance. Bringing you into new realms of territorial expansion. The possibilities are limitless in my realm of kingdom. The only limitation comes from your limited boundary of thinking. That's it. It's limitless. He's limitless. Kingdom is limitless. Miracles and his love, limitless. It's limitless. There is no limit. The only limit comes from the boundary of this stinking thinking right here that David's been talking about. Eradicating that, pulling it out. It comes from the limited boundary of thinking. For as he is in Proverbs 23, 7... As he thinks in his heart, so is he. It's the year to expand past. Say past. Old mindsets and false identities that have held us back and captive to habits and addictions. To expand past it. It's limiting us. It is. And God is saying, come out of it. That's not who you really are. Wow, this is, let me tell you, this is not, what did you call it, Eric? Where are you? What did you call it? You called it um, uh, a nice uh, mess. What did you say? Uh, a self-improvement, right? This is, this is called, let me tell you, this is life-changing. Because the word of God doesn't just improve flesh and improve it changes your life the word of god changes our lives amen your physical eyes and ears have yet to see the manifestation of that which awaits within my limitlessness because you're stuck within the limitations of natural perception 
I have already, say already, already. revealed those things prepared for you. In fact, they were revealed before the foundation of the earth, but they must be perceived and received through the realm of my spirit. In Ephesians 1, 17 through 2, this is part of your homework. I'm not going to read it all, but basically this is what it says. That when Christ was raised from the dead, he was raised and is seated where? At the right hand of the Father. What is under his feet? All everything. All principalities, powers, wickedness in high places, all demonic forces. All of that is under his feet. Under whose feet? Christ's feet. But then it says later on in this scripture, but you. Say, but me. But But I have also been raised in Christ Jesus. And I sit at the, I sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that means if all things are under Christ's feet, it means they're under mine too, right? All things are under my feet. Hallelujah. Talk about getting an identity And giving the enemy an identity crisis. Strip the blinders of doubt from your eyes and loose your ears from the deafening spirits of unbelief. Run over the threshold and behold your inheritance. As I told Abraham to look into the sky and count the stars of his inheritance, I am telling you to look into the limitlessness of your father and count the blessings that are yours. Isaiah 54. Let's turn there. Isaiah 54. Oh, glory to God. This is so in me. Oh, God, this is so, this is like fire. I was putting this together the last few days, and I could feel this electricity inside of me. I was so excited because God did something in me. Enlarge the place of your tent, and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwelling. Do not spare. In other words, don't restrain, don't restrict, and do not quench who God's created you to be. Lengthen your cords, make them long, and strengthen your stakes. Hebrew translation of strengthen your stakes, seize, be strong, courageous, cure, help, repair, fortify, to bind up, to conquer. So, and strengthen your stakes be courageous seize the moment be strong conquer the obstacles strengthen your convictions your identity your resolve your walk and conquer your past for you shall expand in the hebrew that's parats it means to burst out or break through like coming out of the womb or breaking out from an enclosure. So that right there is is talking about birthing the new or coming out of the enslavement. All right, there's two things happening there. Birthing and coming out of. Breaking through and breaking out. Isn't that cool? You shall expand. You shall break out. You shall break through to the right and to the left. And your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is calling in this place people who are going to go into territories that have never been gone to before. And you will go and possess lands in dark places dark places and you will bring my light into those dark places you will expand to the left and right you will see a breakout and a breakthrough in your life and you will see a breakout and a breakthrough in the lives of others oh there's nations in your forecast there is salvations and harvest in your forecast oh there are forecasts in this place 
that are sunny, S-O-N, full of the sun in your forecast. Are there clouds on the horizon? Yep. But the sun wins. The sun wins. Warriors, rise up and take the sword of my spirit, the word of truth, and sever all ties that hold you back. Cut off all ties that keep you tethered to a vision insufficient to contain my intentions and plans for your future. Let me read that again. Cut off all ties that keep you tethered to a vision that's insufficient to contain my intentions and plans for your future. We cut it off in the name of Jesus. We cut off and sever right now everything that's holding us back. All self-introspection go. All self go. Self-consciousness, selfishness, self-righteousness. God, we cut it off. We cut off fear. We cut off fear of failure. We cut off anxiety and worry. We cut off sickness, disease, infirmity in the name of Jesus. We cut it off, sever it in the name of Jesus Christ. Expand your vision. It's too small. Expand your dreams and run into the supernatural realm where dreams do come true. It's time to dream again. It's time to dream big. It's time to walk into your dreams. It's time to build my kingdom. Stretch out beyond your abilities and jump into mine. That's what Eric did. That's what Carlos did. That's what... Jama and Ed did. That's what David and I did. That's what Jen did. That's what Alita did. That's who, that's what Broken Crystal did. That's what Bob did. And Jeannie and Mary. That's what we did. We weren't qualified for all of this. There were masses of people. There were things. There were needs. There was all this. But you know what? We were dead to that. We just knew, God, it's got to be you. I love those that say, I don't feel adequate. Whoa, watch out. <laughs> Who feels adequate for what God might be calling you to? Raise your hand. Who, anybody? Who doesn't? You know, you go, God, but I know he equips me to do what you've called me to do. But when you're face to face with somebody that's a cripple and they come in with a cane and they can hardly walk and, and their husband's holding them up and you see stuff on them from dialysis, their kidneys are failing and they're there looking at you in the face and you're going, oh, dear Jesus. And you just close your eyes and put your hand on them. And the next thing you know, they're throwing down the cane and throwing down your hands and they're walking. That's when you know it's Jesus. It was Jesus. And it's all about Jesus and not about us. Hallelujah. I stretch out beyond your own abilities and jump into mine. I will not only catch you, but will take you into expanded territories of my spirit. And that's what he does. The walking wounded and desolate ones cry out from the harvest field for my bride to emerge with hope, healing, and miracles in her hands. And as I was Reading this and meditating, this is what I saw. I saw the bridegroom, Jesus, catching us and carrying us as his bride over the threshold of our future. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's very good. Now, David, I don't think, I think you wanted to. Did you carry me over the threshold? Absolutely. Yeah, that was 35 years ago. 35 years ago. So he just, I know. I, I thank you for refreshing me. And Pick me up. You want to try that again? How about let's show everybody? Yeah, let's show. <laughs> I'm a few pounds different than I was then. <laughs> Here, let me come. <laughs> but our Jesus knows how to do it all the time. And he lifts his bride up and carries us over the threshold to our destiny. Isn't that fun? Yes, Lord. 
Holy Spirit carries reformation in his wings. And he only asks for our yes, Lord, here I am, move through me. Upon that yes, he will powerfully move through us, each of us, to revolutionize this world, confounding the wise and influencing the influential. My kingdom, heaven culture on earth as it is in heaven. It was humbling. It was awesome that we got to go before this amazing mayor who's just newly born again. And he has these monthly inspirational times for all the government workers to come and to be able to minister and prophesy to him. That was awesome. Isn't that fun? Jesus carried us over the threshold to our future and let us do that. What an honor. Reformation is the act of changing something with the intention of getting back on the right path. Lord, we are in agreement and aligned with your word and the word of the prophets over this nation. And we declare reformation in this nation in Jesus' name. We declare a revelation over this nation. And that, Father God, the blind eyes will see and see who truly the enemy is and who you are. That, Father, this nation will fall on their knees, not worshiping a man, not worshiping an institution, but worshiping you, the one true living God. Father God, we thank you for a revolution. And a reformation in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Revolution is a forcible overthrow of a government or social order in favor of a new system. Father God, we are in alignment with a revolution in the spirit realm. That Lord God, hierarchies of evil are coming down in this nation. We prophesy it. We declare it, Lord God. We speak to the principalities, powers and rulers and wickedness in high places over this mountain, over this city, over this state where we hold authority, Lord God. And we declare governmental order in the name of Jesus. We declare governmental rule spiritually Lord God that all evil will be sliced and diced and that this place this state is coming back to a holy God will bow before a holy God in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah Jesus hallelujah we're going to share a shofar blast this week Many things to cover. God, God has got lots of news. Lots of news we want to get out there to you. The shofar blast is on Facebook. God put on our hearts to expose things that the body of Christ needs to pray about. That you may not know about. So that we can join together and pray. One of the things is. This is. I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, it doesn't matter. What I'm going to share should not be happening. Uh, at meetings, town hall meetings. Uh, prayer is beginning to erupt from the uh, person running, whatever. They said, let's open in prayer. And the place breaks out with jeers, not cheers, jeers. And you can actually hear in it, Lucifer, we love Lucifer. It's Lucifer. We love Satan. Then they said, you know, they prayed through it all and said, in the name of Jesus, roar! It sounded like, uh, it sounded like what Jesus, when he was going down and they were, they were, it was the trial and they said, crucify him, crucify him. I mean, we listened to it. I said, oh my gosh. Just research it. It's everywhere. It's everywhere right now. We'll be talking some on the, about it. The nation, this nation, the one I hold deep within my heart chambers is on a collision course with heaven. I heard the prayers of my bride. Your kingdom come. Your will be done in this nation as it is in heaven. 
And the Lord said, I responded in my host dismantled and eradicated an entire network of principalities, territorial spirits, and wickedness over this nation. And a canopy of evil has been stripped from the spiritual atmosphere. This hierarchy reigned for generations over this country, even before its conception. I knew a new and never seen before move of my spirit will begin to flow from my throne through spiritual floodgates I have strategically placed across the land. I have not forgotten you and you have not been overlooked. I have prepared you for this specific season at this specific time in history. The floodgate opens even at this very moment. Raise your mantles. Oh, thank you, God. What's your mantle? What have you been attacked in? Some of you have had endured pain and suffering and sickness and disease. Healing is your mantle. Some of you have gone through horrific marital problems. Some have, have it, it suffered for years in your marriage and God is healing your marriage. God is bringing you into victory. There's a mantle there, marriage, relationships. Some of you have suffered incredibly financially. You've tithed, you've been faithful, you give and you go, God, what is this? Why is this happening? What is it? You hold a giving gift. You are a giver in the body of Christ. The enemy hates your guts. What is it that God is going to give you? Renato, I tell you what, you went into the courts advocating for children that didn't have a voice. And you became their voice. You hold a mantle. You already know this. You hold a mantle, governmental mantle, for the, for the voiceless children. And that goes to the unborn as well. Raise your mantles and declare righteous justice over this nation. Don't just sit there at home. When you see something on the news, you stand up and you declare righteous justice over this nation. So let's do that right now. What is your mantle? You go, I don't know. Well, stand up anyway because you got one. You have him. You have Jesus. He's a mantle. Love, mantle, joy is a mantle. All the fruit of the spirit. And we're going to declare this. Lord God, I declare righteous justice over this nation. We declare your word of truth into the executive, legislative, and judicial branches of the United States of America. America. We, declare we declare united, united. 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 We, stand. we stand. We declare, we declare. All, governments all governments rest upon your shoulders. Rest upon your shoulders. They, belong to you. they belong to you. Yeshua Jesus. Yeshua Jesus. We, command we command truth revealed. In every area, in, every area. In, Jesus in Jesus' name, all things hidden, all things hidden. Brought, up brought up to the light of your truth, from the very top, the very top. Down. down, truth revealed, truth revealed. In, Jesus in Jesus' name, amen, hallelujah. Jesus. Worship team, come on up. Command truth revealed in every area and watch my light bring massive confusion and chaos in the devil's domain of darkness. My truth blinds and dismantles every evil strategy. This nation will continue to shake as my church continues to rise up dispensing my light into the dark places. Don't hold back. Don't 
keep silent, but boldly walk out into the expanse of limitlessness and shout from the housetops with the voice of triumph, our God reigns. Let's say it. Our God reigns. And the kingdoms of this world, and the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah.